Welcome to the next video lecture in Introduction to Machine Learning. This chapter is going to be um, an introduction to classification and regression trees, CART. All right, um, so before we look at that complicated picture, um, let's just uh, clear up some terminology. So we're talking about classification and regression trees, which is one of the most important machine learning techniques originally introduced by Breiman a fairly long time ago. Um, and the basic idea here, and so let's start looking at the diagram. The basic idea here is that um, we take our data and then we split the data into two parts according to one of the features. So for example, here we're using the feature p tail length. And we're looking at our data and looking whether an observation is above or below 2.4. So that's our split variable and our split point. Um, and depending on what the answer is, when it's yes, we sort the observation into this part of the tree, so to say. And um, if it's not, then we sort the data into that part of the tree. Yeah? And then we do that again and again. And so this is how this tree structure arises. Now, why are we doing this? Well, at some point, um, we are at the end of the tree. We're going to be talking about when that time has come. Um, and at the end of each branch of our tree, so this is a branch of the tree, and this on the complicated thing on the right side is a branch of the tree. At the end of these branches, we have terminal nodes where they no longer split the data, but instead these predict or estimate um, the target variable. Um, and this prediction will be constant for all, it will be the same for all the data that ends up in one of these leaves. Yeah, so every leaf makes a different prediction, but it makes the same prediction for all the observations that end up in that leaf. So in that sense, it's a constant prediction. Um, and this could be either a class label um, or even a probability vector over such labels. Then we're talking about a classification tree. Or it could just be a number, a numerical value. Then we're talking about re a regression tree. Yeah. Um, so um, once we've trained that tree model, now if we want to apply that tree model to new observations, to new data, well, we kind of do the same thing. Yeah, so we, we um, feed our data into the root node of the tree. Um, and then depending on its values of the features, it gets passed down the branches of that tree. Yeah, every observation will end up exactly in just one of these terminal nodes. And all of the observations that end up in one specific leaf they get the same predicted value, the same predicted value of the target variable. All right, um, so now, <clears throat> let me see. Um, so now let's take a closer look at this diagram here because we need to fix some terminology and um, there's a lot to see here. Okay, so this is a classification tree that was trained on the iris data. As I already said, the first node in our tree, the first split, is called the root node. And here these are labeled with the predicted class. And it, in this case, the predicted class is pretty much random because here you see the class distribution of observations that end up in that node. Well, in, in the iris data set, we have the same number of Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica um, flowers. So it's one third for each. Yeah. Um, and this node contains 100% of our original training data. Yeah. All right. Um, now, if the petal length is below 2.4, we say, okay, this is Setosa. And actually, in our training data, all the variables yeah, that end up in this node, they were actually Setosa. Yeah, so this is a very very pure note. This is already a very good classification rule. Just by looking at one of the features, Peter length, and deciding whether it's 0.24, it 
sorry, whether it's smaller than 2.4, and we can already classify the flowers for which this is true correctly, 100% Satosa. Yeah? And in the, other, in the other case, we have to make some more distinctions, but we do end up with mostly fairly pure notes here. So for example, this note has 98% versicolor, um, contains 32% of the data. This note here has 98% virginica, contains 31% of the data. And then there is this one, I would say problematic node, yeah, where we don't really know what's happening. Uh, one, third is, um, <clears throat> one third is versicolor and two thirds are virginica. Yeah, so we'll predict virginica for all the observations that end up in that node because that's the, that's the majority class but that's going to be wrong for many of them. Yeah. Okay, these are called internal nodes and these are called terminal nodes, leaves. Okay. All right. Um, now, how does this look like? What does this look like for, for regression? Well, you can visualize this very simply for a univariate regression model. So now, on the horizontal axis here, we have our feature X and on the vertical axis here, we have our target variable Y and the regression tree uh, would look like this. So you would first maybe um, split your data um, here. Yeah? So you end up with one predicted value on the right side of that node and another predicted value on the left side of that node. And then you make further splits and every time you split, you, well, you find figure out what the optimal prediction here would be here. So here in this graph, in black, you have the true unknown regression function, f of x. Um, and in red, the dots, you have your data. And then the red step function, that would be essentially the predictions of your tree model or the function f of x that your tree model represents. Yeah, so... This is what this looks like for our regression. You have this tree. In this case, the tree only uses X. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> and then you end up with a step function that approximates the function that you're trying to learn, more or less. All right. Um, another way to think about trees is um, to think of them not so much as this branching structure, yeah, but um, think about what the function actually is that these trees learn. And from what we've just seen for this uh, step function, but also already what we've seen for the iris data set is that essentially what a tree does is that every point in your input space X is assigned to exactly one leaf. And each of these leaves is basically defined by a set of conditions or intervals, defining intervals over the specific features that make up this feature space. Yeah. So essentially every leaf is defined by a rectangle in the feature space um, where the extent of that rectangle is defined by basically the intervals um, that the split that all the that all the internal splits that led up to this terminal node um, created. Yeah, so um, we can write out the function, the model function that the tree learner learns as a sum of indicator functions where this indicator function here, um, where each indicator function is relates to one of the rectangles that represents the region in the feature space that corresponds to one specific node. Yeah. So if a feature vector falls into one specific rectangle that represents one of the terminal nodes of the tree, yeah, then my prediction will be that prediction for, well, that terminal node. Yeah? And this sum here, for every given x, only one of the terms in that sum 
will not be zero because x can only ever lie in one of these rectangles. Yeah, all the other all the other indicator functions will be zero. Okay, so if we visualize the tree that uh, we've seen earlier um, on the other slides, yeah, for the iris data, for example, we get um, a tree like this. Yeah, so if petal length is below 2.4 we always classify Satosa. Yeah, so that's the rectangle for that first terminal node. Yeah. Um, and then we make another split yeah, for, for the data on the other side. Well, for the data on the other side, if petal width is above, oh, I don't know, 1.7 or something, yeah, then we assign Virginica. And if not, we assign Versicolor. Yeah. So that would be a very simple um, tree with one terminal with three terminal nodes. Okay, so that's the visualization for the iris data set. The important thing to take away here is that we can understand the functions that are learned by these tree models as essentially a rectangular tessellation of our input feature space, um, where we predict a constant value in each of these rectangular areas defined by the tree. Um, so what that means, if we're thinking about um, this overarching framework, thinking about learners in terms of hypothesis space, risk optimization. Now, the first thing that we've learned about uh, trees is not just how they are structured internally, but also in terms of their hypothesis space, we can now say that the hypothesis space of such classification and regression trees is uh, the set of all step functions over rectangular partitions of the feature space. Okay. Two examples below here, one for classification, one for regression. Okay, and um, now what remains is to talk about, okay, well, how does risk look like in this context? What can we use as risk measures, loss functions for tree based learners, or sorry, for tree learners, um, and optimization. So how do we actually figure out uh, the best possible structure of that tree? Thank you for listening. Goodbye.